Charlie. We can sit here for a hundred years and, and, and people won't understand. You know, me and you hooked up because it's just like we, we talked similar. We we think similar. The only thing different is the color of the people talking. I don't have a beard, but well, I could. But that's the only difference is the location. Yeah, you know, I'm just as white as you, just as black. You know, put it like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So as an individual and as a thinking individual, it hurts my feelings and my mind in itself to believe that, okay, now I think white people think this way because these white people think these way. And I divided this between this and this and this that comes up with this. This is how you talk to these people right here in the middle. You talk to them with respect. You talk to them like they talk to you. But when I speak to white people like this, a lot of white people get offended. And when I'm in court, you know, I don't go to court no more, but when I had to go to court, I speak like this. And when every other black man, and, 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 and they was doing, uh, uh, and every other black person got up and it was like, it was like I was an attorney. And everybody else was, you know, I could have I could have actually been an interpreter for these black people. That's how bad it was. Whenever there was somebody black had to speak in court other than me. Um, societal issues as a whole. Me and you can sit back and talk about race because it doesn't affect us because look, we look past it. We know that there's intangibles that keep people from being there. Like this, there's there's uh, What's the word I want to use? Oh my God! There, um, I'm not gonna call them. Okay, the easiest word to say is obstacles. There are obstacles placed in front of people, hurdles, as you will, placed in front of people, so they have to be smart enough to get out of the situation. In other words, in other words, people are created equal, but black people and white people have structures placed in front of them. In other words. There's obstacles placed in front of us so we can't reach our maximum ability. And I believe maybe some of these obstacles placed there are so the cream will rise to the top. Because if you can't get over the first obstacle and you give up, then your life is in that run. You get over that obstacle, then your life is in this area. You get over that obstacle and your life is in this area. But some people start off 500 miles in front of everybody else. If, you're, if we start a race together, and you get to start off 500 miles in front of me. Who's going to win the race if the race is a 900-mile race? You look at it like that. Life is like that. There's obstacles placed in front of Africans Americans for the sole purpose of seeing which one will rise to the top. But in not giving the same opportunities to people, you cannot see if anybody can rise. If there's no opportunity given to you, and you start a race 500 miles behind, and the race is a 900 mile race, and all you got is a pair of shoes. You don't get a car. They gave the other guy a car. He still got to start 500 miles back than the other guy, but he's got a car. He's like, when you look at situations, and I'm, I'm using metaphors and all this and that, and, and the average person will not be able to figure out what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm talking about the divide between white people and black people and rich white people and regular white people. Now the regular white people are on the same level with the poor white people because rich white people can't see them. Those same obstacles are put there, but these white people have a car. And now that these white people have a car and, they, and they're in the same race, a 900 mile race, and they got a car and they got a 200 mile head start. Not the 500 mile head start like the rich. 500 mile head start. Learjet. All expenses paid. You got the regular white family. 200 mile head start. A car. Then what happens? They got the same obstacles. Car breaks down. Uh, ravine. You know, bridge out. And they got to go around and weave their way around just to get their kids' education. But the rich people send them straight through. And we have uh, the straight state of California, they want to raise tuition on the public colleges, the public universities. 
$10,000. So the white family in the car with the 200 mile, you know, head start is weaving through this stuff. Now the kids get ready to go to school, but they can't get out of the car because now they got to work too. Because these other people with the 500 mile head start, the Learjet, their kids are already in college. They're about to graduate. Fast track. And that divide, these people in, in the 500 mile head start, they, 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 they run industry. Of course they're not going to report on white crime until it happens to them, until one of their boys get busted raiding a company. But that's okay. You won't go to jail. Remember, they got that 500 mile head start because they're somebody. And these poor white people just trying to go through the maze. We forgot about the blacks way back at the finish line with a pair of shoes on, trying to make it. He runs, he jumps, he hurdles. He's caught up with the guy in the car. 200 mile head start. People 500 mile head start, they got one mile to go. This race has been going on for a thousand years and they got one mile to go. The black man has just caught up with the poor white guy in the car and he's wearing a pair of shoes. You see where I'm getting at. As a people, we don't take care of each other and those with the power to control us, they're all good. They're all good. And some of them are black. Some of them are Spanish. Most of them are white. Most of them come from Europe. Most of them are descendants from kings and queens. What are we? We're still peasants in their world. Because remember, they got that 500 mile head start. No obstacles in front of them because they got airplanes and shit. And we, blacks and whites, Mexicans and everybody, on foot, in cars, and boats, and anything we can get. But we still won't win this race because we all started behind. Now, if you take that metaphor and you look at it like this, if you, as a white person, you go rob a bank. You're getting 56 years, right? You're getting some years. But you, as a white person, you built a company. You built billions from a company. It all depends on who you are. <laughs> What's the difference when the white guy robbed a liquor store and the white guy <laughs> robbed Enron, World Bank, or European, or... How much is too much when a group of people make thousand, two, three, four thousand dollars an hour? They go to work two days a week. They get paid for 40 hours a week. And then factories are white people. And the factories are black people. And then the factories are Mexicans. And the offices are what? And the CEO on the 59th floor? What does he do? And when he robs people, and steals from people, is he getting treated like a criminal? No. A poor white man gets thrown under the bus. A poor black man gets thrown under the bus, and then the bus itself is placed on railroad tracks, and then the five o'clock comes through. Mexicans, well, fuck it. They're just shit out of fucking luck. They're like cockroaches. They're everywhere. I'm tired of hearing shit like that. I'm tired of hearing negativity about black people. I'm tired of hearing negativity about Mexicans. And I'm tired of seeing negativity from white people. I'm tired of watching the news and only seeing crime committed by black people. I'm tired of going outside and watching crime committed by white people. I'm tired of seeing Mexicans. I'm tired of seeing white people. I'm tired of seeing black people. I'm tired of seeing Asians. I'm just tired of seeing people with no sense of each other. A lot of white people. A lot of white people can't see beyond white people. Every crime committed is always by a Mexican or a black. And I'm tired of it. Because that, birds in the backyard, because that mentality not only kills us, it kills us all. If we can't be at the starting line 500 miles away from where we start, if we all can't start at that same spot, then why the fuck should we fight each other forsaking those who have more than all of us. I'm tired of it. So the next time somebody wants to call me a nigga, fine. I'm nigga, nigga, hey! Cool. Next time you want to call Father Judgment, crazy, crack, crazy, crack, crazy, white man! Cool.